Aloha. Welcome to Wednesday online service at the Punahon Ganji Buddhist Temple. Hello. Can you hear me again? Again, soft voice again? No? Uh, I hope uh, you can watch and then listen without interruption or some more clear voice it seems like uh, voice is softer again testing testing let me try again set up again it seems like a uh, voice is uh, too soft
Spreading spirit of living with brave hearts. Spreading spirit of caring, helping others. Who does great light shines into all hearts? Oh, testing, testing. Can you hear me or still? Hello, hello. Mm. It seems uh, the video is on. In my computer, uh, no video, no. Nothing working on on my video, but uh, are you watching? You can hear, you can see my motion. not much better I hope you can hear uh, let me now 
reconnect with the Facebook again. Thank you again for your patience. Uh, No motion, how about now? You see me no motion. Okay. Yeah, I cut the connection with the Facebook since it doesn't work. I reconnected with Facebook. Okay. Hmm. Okay, now thank you so much for your patience again. Okay, so I'll now turn off the music. Okay, so uh, let us begin our Wednesday service. Okay, again, welcome to uh, Wednesday Dharma service at the Puna Honganji Buddhist Temple. Okay, now we'll begin our service with the chanting of Vandanati Sarana. So please put your hands together in Gashu. No, 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 Exalted One, the Enlightened One, the Supremely Awakened One, Bundon Sononon Gacho.
I want to share my own message. So tonight's message title is Virtual Amida Buddha. So I guess yeah, after again, we are going through COVID-19 and then I think uh, every day or quite often we hear or read or listen to these words. Yeah, virtual, online, internet, web. Yeah, could be we listen to, watch, read, hear these words so many times. So these words, yeah, like a meaning, describe something that exists in essence, but, in, but not in actuality. So something through essence, or something we can see, we can listen, we can watch, but it does not exist actuality only exists in online or TV or internet. But essence, we can feel it. Or another way is not physically existing as such, but made up by software to appear to do so. Yeah, so something is, does not exist physically. However, it seems like it seems like exist due to the software or uh, tools as internet or computer. So some example can be like uh, yeah, virtual bone dance. I think, I hope you had a chance to watch the YouTube video we created for our Puna Honganji bone dance, virtual bone dance, yeah. So this is like uh, exist in internet, yeah. So it doesn't happen physically in our uh, this year, but on the internet or online, people can listen to music, they can see taiko drumming, and then dancing as if we are together. But uh, it's only exist in the on the internet, yeah. or uh, this online service too. You can watch, you can listen, chanting and the message. But it is only, again, exists only this online world. Yeah? Also, we do have a web meeting, online shopping, internet surfing. Yeah? So these are available thanks to uh, tools, online, such, uh, virtual, and online. So even today, uh, you are watching this service through uh, online, through your cell phone, uh, through your computer yeah and then you can hear you can also chant yeah however when you see uh, incense smoke arising a smoke arising you can see it however can you smell it yeah I offer incense in this altar and if you see the smoke arising yeah Although you can see it, you cannot smell, yeah? And we have an offering of flowers. You can see these flowers, but you cannot touch, you cannot smell it. So, uh, which what it means is that we can see altar, we can listen to message. However, there are things we cannot feel physically. So there are two things here. Yeah? Some people may say prefer to have a service through uh, online. Or some people may say they may prefer to watching, uh, to attending service in person. Yeah. Of course, uh, now due to COVID-19 situation, usually we do have a service uh, online. And if we have uh, in person, we do have a certain uh, limitations or regulations, such as social distance or mask. So for you, which do you prefer to attend a service online or in person? And then, again, like uh, incense offering of flowers, there are things we can see, we can uh, listen, but we cannot touch, we cannot smell. Yeah? So therefore, that is another reason. In the beginning, I wanted to invite you to offer incense at your home offer flowers so that you can also have a connection through this service. 
So you can smell the fragrance of incense at your home. Flowers, you can see and then feel the fresh flowers. And then, so today again, Amida Buddha, Buddha of compassion, wisdom. Yeah. So we learn the words of virtual. Yeah. Virtual means to describe something that exists in essence but not in actuality. So when we say we see Amida Buddha statue through online, you are now watching Amida Buddha statue through online, virtual. Does that mean Amida Buddha only exists through only online? Does not exist in actuality? But we can feel essence. So when you see this Amida Buddha statue, yeah. Question is, do you feel Amida Buddha's compassion and wisdom? Yeah, this service and the Amida Buddha statue now exists only this online. However, does that mean you cannot touch, you cannot feel, or do you feel Buddha's compassion, wisdom in your life? So let me share one story with you. I heard from the senior minister, and then I also adding my adding my taste of my appreciation this story. So in Japan, like uh, there was a TV program. So on this TV program, what they do is uh, they collecting the questions from people, and then they try to finding answers. So like uh, in this uh, picture, you can see like a fl flying pen. So one question was, what is the best way to polish this uh, frying pan? And then they, they research and then they are trying to find the uh, best answers. What is the best way to polish? So in that way, like uh, they are again collecting so many questions. So people have a question about so many things. And then this TV uh, program, they try to find answers. And then there is a one person, gentleman. He was about his 65 years old. And he also had a question. And his question was this. Did my father know I was going to be born? So this was his question. Yeah. So what it means is, yeah. So this uh, person who had this question so his own father, yeah, he got to marry, and then five months after his marriage, he was drafted and went to Philippines in 1944 August. Yeah. And then he passed away before the child was born in 1945 January. Yeah. So his question was, yeah, his father got to married and then went to Philippines and he passed away. And after he passed away, this person was born. So his question was again, did my father, he knew or he know I was going to be born? So this was his question. And then after he passed away, uh, his father passed away in Philippines, his mother raised him and she also passed away recently. So, yeah, so this person uh, cleaning his mother's house. And then when he was cleaning his house, he found two letters which his father wrote to his uh, mother, his wife, from Philippines. Yeah. And then, however, the letters were so old that to read. So he couldn't read what this letter is uh, about. However, he thinks there is a word, pregnant, was written in the letter. So again, question was, did my father know I was going to be born? Yeah. So it seems that when he was reading a letter, which his father wrote to his uh, wife, however, it seems he was writing like a pregnant or uh, you have a baby in your baby. However, no guarantee. It seems that 
he was not sure. So it's like a, a big question to him in entire his life. He didn't see his father, he didn't have a father, and even he had no memories of his father. So therefore, he was truly missing the father's figures. So this question is a big deal to him. Did my father know my existence or totally he had no idea? So big deal to his, him. So he and then the TV program people, they try to their best, try to read this letter. What is written in this letter? However, they couldn't do it. They couldn't, they couldn't read the letter, no matter they try. However, finally, with the help by the professors and the researchers, they were able to read the letter. So again, the question is, yeah, did my father know I was going to be born? And then, answer, what they found was, in the letter, they found, they, they were able to confirm. Yes, he knew. His father, he was writing to his wife, you, our baby is going to be born, you are pregnant. So his father, he knew the baby was going to be born. And then that was the moment to him, he was so happy. Yeah? Entire, again, his life, uh, after he was born, only he and his mother, he had uh, no memories of his father, no uh, experience playing together, or no memories, no experience of his father. But now, he can feel before his father going to Philippines. Could be uh, he may talk to his wife and then telling him in, uh, in, he, in her body, hey baby boy, I'm your father. I'm going to be your father. I love you forever. Remember, I'll, I'll be your father. I love you. I love you forever. Then after, of course, so sadly, he passed away. So he had no chance to hold his baby in his arms. But surely, he put his love, wish, caring, everything into to the baby to be born. And then for again for his son, now he feels, huh, entire his life, he thought, I don't have a father, I don't receive anything from my father. But actually, before he was born, he was receiving his father's love, compassion, caring, everything to him. So entire his life, when he was missing him, every uh, life experience he had, actually, his father has been there, always with him. Always his father's love, caring is supporting, accepting, embracing him. So now he feels, his son feels, my father, he knows me and he loves me. And he cried for joy and so happy. I was not alone. My father, he was with me forever. Yeah, so in this way, although he couldn't see his father, he truly feels his father's love beyond time, beyond space. After 65 years later, he realized for 65 years, his father's love has been with him. And then in a similar way, therefore, our found uh, in Contemplation Sutra says, Do you know that Amida Buddha is not very far from here? You should concentrate your thoughts and clearly visualize the one in that land who already accomplished the pure acts. So Amida Buddha, when you see statue altar over there or through online, we may feel kind of far 
or we only seeing through online. But Amida Buddha does not exist somewhere far place or only Western Pure Land. Amida Buddha truly exists with me, with us forever. Not only when we think of Buddha or when we have a chanting, no matter where we are, no matter whatever happens in our life, Amida Buddha's compassion wisdom is living in our life forever with us. Yeah. So therefore, for each of us, like a story for the child, he was not sure if his father knew him or he was going to be born. But now he realized, beyond the time and then space, his father's love forever with him. In a similar way, Amida Buddha's compassion forever reaching out to us. So therefore, today it's, it's our turn, your turn, to deeply realize, to ask ourselves, do I feel Buddha's compassion wisdom, which is forever reaching out to each of us? Once we receive it, realize, that's right, Amida Buddha's compassion is with me. And that is a moment our hands are placed together. I am in Buddha's embrace. This Buddha's compassion forever embracing me. And then Namo Amida Buddha comes out from our mouth. Namanda Namanda. Therefore, today, before uh, concluding our service here, yeah, like a story for this uh, child and his father, they couldn't meet in their lifetime, but now they are awakened. They are actually together, forever together, every single moment in their life. And now, uh, if you see each other today, you may listen to this uh, message of a service with your family or brother, sister, or friends. Could be you are together over there. But question is, do you really meeting each other? Do you really feel each other's existence, life, with preciousness and then profound love? Yeah, could be you are meeting, living together, eating meals, uh, exchanging greetings. Yeah, you are laughing together, talking story. But do are we really meeting? Are we really seeking each other? Are we really appreciating each other? That is a question today we can ask ourselves too. We get to really receive, not only see outside of appearance, we get to receive the essence. Yeah? So again today, as we see Amida Buddha through online or virtual, although it is a maybe far place or we cannot touch in person, but we get to receive the essence of Amida Buddha, which is compassion, embracing everybody as they are, but does wisdom to see everything as it is. And we can deeply remember Amida Buddha does not live far place from here, forever with us, guiding each of us. So as a conclusion, please put your hand together in Gashio. The Contemplation Sutra says, do you know that Amida Buddha is not very far from here. You should concentrate your thoughts and clearly visualize the one in that land who already accomplished the pure acts. No more Amida Buddha, no more Amida Buddha, no more Amida Buddha. Now we do have a unison reading the creed. We rely upon Amida Tathagata with our whole heart for the enlightenment in the life to come, abstaining from all sundry practices and teachings, and giving up the trust in our limited self. We believe that the assurance of birth comes at the very moment we entrust, and we call the name Namo Amida Butsu in joy and gratitude for the Buddha's compassion. We also acknowledge gratefully the benign benevolence of our founder and succeeding masters who have led us to believe in this profound teaching. 
and we do not endeavor to follow throughout our lives the way laid down for us. Amando, no mando, no mando. We do have a chanting of Nembutsu, so please put your hands together in Gashio again. No. So this coming Sunday, uh, Sunday service in person, also online, is by myself, and the message title is Soaking Myself in the Dharma Bath. Also, following Monday is a message for children. The title is Be the Best You Can Be. And the Tuesday Buddhism class online is a three we are learning about the causal bittersweet, three poisons, and the main topic is stupidity or ignorance. Also following Sunday, uh, Wednesday is uh, 7 o'clock and the title is ASMR. And again, so as we are going through still uh, difficulties of COVID-19, also I hope you are okay through uh, Hurricane 2. But uh, please stay safe and uh, healthy. And then let us uh, always remember Amida Buddha's compassion and uh, wisdom forever reaching out and uh, calling to us. Don't worry, be happy. I shall embrace you as you are, whatever happens. So let us uh, feel and then realize Amida Buddha is uh, not only exists online or virtual or altar, forever living in our life, daily life, every day in our life. When we receive it, Namo Amida Buddha comes out as an expression of gratitude, also as an expression we are in Buddha's embrace. So again, today, uh, thank you so much for your patience about the technical problems. Uh, we will try to improve. Again, thank you so much. Have a beautiful Wednesday night. Also, a peaceful Thursday. Thank you so much. Mahalo.